Hey, thanks so much for tuning in, man. Life of an entrepreneur. Talk about multiple streams of income tonight. Wealth and wisdom Wednesday. We're really just talking about business, guys. And um, I'm ERGJ. I am your certified financial educator. I am a business, life, and personal finance coach. I kind of do it all. And uh, one thing I would tell you guys is that um, I think all of you guys have some multiple talents. Um, and I think that I don't know what I was listening to the other day, but he said that you know, don't let anybody put you into a box. When you get become an entrepreneur, you're able to actually, uh, you are actually able to use all of your talents and you can actually create streams of income from them. Um, you know, just because I'm a certified financial educator doesn't mean I can do other things that I have interest in. I am free to do those things and try a whole bunch of different things to, you know, try to generate some revenue, but also just doing some of the stuff that I love. So what I want to talk to you guys about, about is a little bit about my journey. Um, and then also, I wanted to hear from you guys. I really want to know uh, with you guys, number one, the first question I got to ask is how many streams of income do you currently have? How many streams of income do you currently have coming into your household right now? How many streams? So, if, you know, if you're not ashamed or you want to share you know, what you got going on, um, you can just put a number up in the chat below. How many streams of income do you have right now? Now, we understand that, uh, you know, wealthy people, um, they talk about, you know, having multiple streams of income. And I want to challenge you guys tonight to start thinking about different ways. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to help you to expand your level of thinking. Because many of you guys have ideas, but you don't necessarily know how to implement them or how to turn them into a stream of income. So I'm going to share with you my story and, um, and then... I really started to realize I didn't realize I have so many streams of income that um, that I that I do now today. So I'm gonna share with you some of those things as well. So Renata said two, two, one. Okay, that's cool. So a year ago, I had one stream of income, guys. And that was my job. A year ago, uh, yeah, yeah, a year ago, I quit my job on in April of last year, and that's when I really said I'm going to really work on my business. Of course, I had been working on my business uh, probably. Um, I don't know, about three months before I quit my job, I had just created my, uh, my first service, which was the retirement review. So many of you guys know my story. If you don't, uh, I was working at a Fortune 500 company. Uh, I was starting to get uh, get this feeling like I wanted to go in a different direction. Um, I started looking at uh, transitioning laterally in the company because um, I had this propensity for finance. And I was a forecast analyst, which is more just on the workforce side. And so I was like, hey, you know, I really want to do something with finance. I really want to do something with money um, because when I was at my job, many people would come up to me and ask me about their 401k and what I was doing and how I was uh, setting up my um, my allowances uh, or my allocations, I'm sorry, uh, for my 401k. And I was like, well, why is everybody coming to me? And then I realized that the companies, they go over benefits, but they don't teach people about the benefits. So I decided to create a service called the Retire Review where I teach people about the very own benefits that they have, which happens to be your 401k, your TSP, or your IRA. So right then and there, at that moment, when I decided to create that service, that became a second stream of income. That was number two. I had my job and I had the Retire Review. And then also at that time, I had a second job. So I had three streams of income before I left my job. I had my job. I had my par my part-time job. I was delivering pizzas to get out of debt. And I had created my first service for my business. So it's three streams of income that I had rolling into the time that I quit my job. All right. So so if 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 you're working right now, you have a job, that's fine. If you're like, hey, I want to find a way out of my job. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is having an exit strategy. And I'm actually going to create another service called the exit strategy to help people to. OK, good. Fantastic. To help people to plan their way, plan their way to firing their own boss. Planning your way is important. I had a plan before I quit my job. Let me repeat that again. I didn't just quit my job. I didn't just walk in one day and say, you know what? I quit. No, 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 no. I had a plan. Now, the plan didn't go according to plan, but I had a plan. My plan was to stay until like June so I could get fully vested and I could take all of my money with me in the 401k that I had. But you know what? I couldn't make it to June. It was, uh, it was time to go when I got that email that said, you know what, Evan? I saw last week you were six minutes late from lunch. And I said, you know what, boss? You're never going to give me another email like that again because I quit. So anyway, that's what happened. Um, 
So at any rate, so I had three streams of income before I left my left my job. I had a plan before I left my job. And now I was working in my business. So obviously I quit my main job and I was still working, uh, delivering pizzas and I was building my business. So I didn't leave without having some stream of income, some consistent stream of income that I had while I was building my business. So I was working full time. I had a part time and I had my business. Now I had my business full time. I still had my part time and I was developing services throughout that time frame. So matter of fact, I'm sorry. I had four streams of income before I left my job because I forgot I was investing. So I had learned how to invest as well. I was trading. So this is what it was. So I had my job, my part time job. I had my trading that I was doing in the market and I had created my first service for my business. So that's four streams of income that I had before I quit my job. That's four. And many of you guys said you have one or two right now. So now it's like, okay, well, well, regardless of where you're at and what you're doing, what can you do to actually start to create multiple streams of income? So then you put all of your eggs in one basket. Now, Renata said that she's investing. She's uh, getting with her Vanguard. So she's probably working on her retirement stuff. That's cool. Um, um, yeah, their funds are awesome. Y'all talking about, so I'll get there with y'all talking about in a second. So, um, so I have four streams. Think about this, guys. I had created four streams of income before I quit my job. Four. And this was a year ago. So you can imagine if I had four then, imagine how many I have now. And many of you guys are saying that you have one stream of income. Somebody just said two streams of income. So, so if you have one stream of income and that stream dries up, how many will you have? Zero. If you have two streams of income and your main stream dries up, will that second stream be enough to sustain you through this period of transition? Probably not. You need to start to think about developing multiple streams. Now, uh, Renata was in. Renata, if you can jump in, so we can have this conversation uh, about um, the lady or the, the the what we saw today. We, we had a, a video come out about a lady who had a bachelor's degree, a PhD a master's, and she had written four books, but she was on welfare. So, so, and, and it's like, oh, hold on, you got all of this education, but you're not leveraging your education to develop multiple streams of income so that you don't have to rely on this job that won't pay you what you're worth. She's got books that she's written, but obviously she must not be very great at sales and marketing because those books, hopefully she should be able to start selling those books. That's another stream of income. And there's and what what's happening is that they are um, they are trying to push people to pay them what they're worth, and that never works. You can't protest for higher wages. You just got to go create higher wages for yourself. Forget the system. Go create your own. This is the freedom of being in a free market society. Because if they won't pay you what you worth, you can command what you worth somewhere else. And that's the mindset that I know many of you guys have that are tuning in tonight. You're like, you know what? I can create for myself. I have the power to create wealth. I've been given the ability by the person who created me, whoever you believe that to be, in order to manifest here on the earth. Now, here's the wonderful thing that you have that can never be taken away, and it is your creativity. You have creativity. So getting back to my story, I left my job and I had now I had three streams of income. I lost my mainstream or I quit from my mainstream and I had my tech said my business is going to be my mainstream. So my business, my part time job and trading was my three streams of income. When I told my boss, F you, <laughs> I didn't tell him that really. But I basically in my mind, I was saying, F you six minutes late from lunch. You can kiss my ass. I had three streams of income. Now, when I left, I was I was just like anybody else. Like, what am I going to do? Is this going to work? And obviously, I'm still doing it. And I am unemployable at this time because I, I think I'm up to about 10 streams of income. So let's talk about the streams of income that I have. Now, I'm giving this to you tonight free of charge because I love my peeps, right? I don't want to, you know, to tell you my story and what I'm doing, I could probably be charging you for this right now, but I'm not because I love my peace. I want to give you what's a part of me, and I want to help you to get to where you want to go. So Renata's here, and I don't know how long she's going to be here, so we got to talk about this for a second. Hello. What up? What up? You have to put the hat on and everything? You gotta... No. <laughs> I keep my hair covered most of the time now because I'm focused on my business and my health, so 
the hair has got to go for right now. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's hey, you know what? You know, I'm all with it. I'm all with it. All right, so Renata, we were talking about this earlier. I'm gonna get back and tell you guys about my most extreme. I don't know how Renata, how long Renata gonna be here on camera. Not too long. I got a client um in about 30 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I said I gotta get right on to it. So Renata, man, so share with me, with us your sentiments uh regarding the story that we read earlier. Again, the lady who's three back three, all these major accomplishments in the educational field all these degrees four books written and struggling as a um as a what is it a, a adjunct teacher or something like that and on welfare man what were your thoughts you know seeing that seeing that um you know reading that story seeing that video um well first of all my heart was broken of course um, however, I was not surprised. Um, I am a graduate student. I am um, halfway through my dissertation. I'm accepting prayers and well wishes that I finish it all <laughs> from everybody. Um, but however, I've seen many of my graduate school colleagues um, in the same position. And uh, I'll tell you one story. I know a girl who taught at Yale who, um, and I, I, I attend Texas A&M, which if anybody, um, you know, is in Texas, no, that's one of the best schools, state supported schools in the state. Um, and uh, I'm in education. So um, I've seen people like her and it just baffles my mind. Um, you know, I saw maybe two or three years into the academy that I was being trained to basically um, become a researcher and make millions of dollars for this university. And don't get me wrong, a professor in education can do pretty decent for themselves. Um, professors in the sciences and the mathematics can, you know, reach up to the half a million. Business school professors can make up to a million dollars a year. But you make that university tens of million and 20 million dollars in the process of doing that with your you know sharing some of your publishing rights and your conference presentations and your academic publications and mainly the grant writing for your research projects and so i simply thought hell if i'm going to go through all of this hard work these long sleepless nights of study of writing of publishing of traveling of giving up time with my family um I'm going to be making this money for myself, <laughs> not some university that's going to give nothing back to my community, that's going to give nothing back to my family, that's going to give nothing back to my future descendants. That when I die, they will have a little ceremony in my department and pay my family their um, life insurance policy and act like I never even existed. Um, you know, and the thing about academia is there are there's a lot of prestige um you know if you become a published author or a you know renowned keynote speaker there's a lot of prestige that's attached to that and like i said you can do it well within the six figures however if you the the, the effort that it takes to do that and the sacrifices that you have to make are so grave that you know, I just kind of figured out I might as well be making those sacrifices to build and create something of my own. So, so, so when you said that it baffles you, uh, and then obviously I want you to tell us what you do because I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, ever since I met this phenomenal woman here, uh, my sister from another mister, it's been on and popping. Now, I, you know, I ain't gonna get on you tonight about you <laughs> in your own way. We're gonna say that for another time, but, but uh, why, when you say it baffled you. What did you mean? What, what baffled you about that 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 video? Um, because I know the work that it takes to get a doctorate. I mean, you literally have to sacrifice a good anywhere from three if you're super ambitious to um, six, sometimes even seven uh, years of your life working tirelessly, researching tirelessly. You go through millions of pages of manuscript, reading and writing. Um, you travel around the country going to conference presentations if you're at a university that's gearing you to do research which all of these universities are because research is their money right when they write grants and they get these millions of dollars of grants from um public institutions from the government um that's what brings the university revenue besides the football team of course yeah 
so basically you become through your scholarship you become a cash cow for the university yeah and here's the thing um you develop many skills that an entrepreneur needs for example um I feel like now I'm primed to be a motivational speaker because I have spoken around the world at many conferences about my research. And of course, it's something that I spoke that I was passionately about, um, that I was passionate about. So, um, you know, you can take that and create a motivational speaking career. Yeah. Um, you have to write countless documents. So you become an excellent writer and a researcher and a proofreader. You can take that and make a business out of it. Private tutoring, which is the business that I'm in, is a multi-billion dollar industry that's set to grow astronomically. Did you say multi-thousand Did you say multi -thousand industry? No, billion. Multi-million or multi-billion? Oh, multi-billion, okay. <laughs> multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. And it's set to grow astronomically within the next 10 years. Um, so, 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 so let me ask you this. So, so tell us about what you do as a in private tutoring. Okay, so um, I um, basically am a private tutor. I offer, my company's name is Pre-K to PhD. We do private tutoring. We do test prep. And we also have an exclusive service called our educational concierge service, where basically uh, we serve as an educational personal assistant that, um, you know, encompasses tutoring and also encompasses um, admission consultings to um, private schools and the nation's top boarding schools, as well as college. Um, we also give educational counseling and advising in case your child is struggling. Maybe they suffer from a disability that can be classified um, under 504, which is the Special Education Act. We help to facilitate that process um, and get your child the best educational supports so that they become academically successful. Um, and so, um, and we're also branching out um, into other areas now um, in terms of teacher training and professional development. And my uh, goal is to one day branch out into um, educational, motivational speaking. So let, so, me, ask, let me ask this, with this, this so you went from, uh, you know, got your PhD, um, may have went the route of, of, uh, of, of, you know, very similar to the woman with teaching in, uh, you know, formal professor type world to creating your own platform. Now, now you're in you're in Houston? Yes. Houston, right? Uh, Anthony, where are you? Are you in Houston as well? You're in Texas too, right? He's in Dallas. I don't know how far, how far is that? About three, no, four hours. Okay, well, that might, there may be an opportunity there, um, you know, from an educational standpoint to be able to work together. <laughs> um, so, so, so what made you decide to, what pushed you into creating your own? And then also, you just mentioned a whole bunch of services that your business offers, which now your business has multiple streams of income as well, right? Well, you know what? Now that you, you know, now that I listen to your definition of multiple streams, I guess I do have also multiple streams. And let me take a little bit of time, if you don't mind, to also talk about one other service that we are building. Um, we do um, educational travel. Specifically, I was a Spanish teacher when I was in the classroom. And so we do a Spanish language immersion service and we're gearing up right now for our second annual uh, trip. I take, uh, I took a group of students last year to Turrialba, Costa Rica for an entire month where they attended a Spanish language immersion school and did a lot of the touristy um, things and had a really steep science education because Costa Rica is a high um, agricultural nation. Um, and, um, it's, a, it's just a prime place to study science, biological science, uh, environmental science. And so we are planning for a trip for 2016 as we speak. But um, that's another thing that I'm adding, also the educational travel component. Yeah. Uh, and so in doing that, I'm, I've decided the, you know, the way to make it most profitable is to become an a, a, a official travel agent. Look at that. So... Um, so yeah, so that's something else that we're doing as well. You say it's supposed to travel agent, like you're gonna really be a travel agent, or you're gonna be like a vacation plus travel agent or something. No, no, I'm gonna go <laughs> in my own agency with the host travel agency, not World Ventures, none of that multi-level marketing stuff. Because no. you, know, you know we're gonna need a travel agent when we get ready to go to uh, Africa. 
Absolutely. Uh, MBW, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 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 now that we're talking about multiple screens, uh, Ms. Renata. Now, 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 I think your answer is going to change because you're saying, "Well, hey, I didn't think about that." So tell me about the screen that you currently have, but then also the ones that you're developing. Because you mentioned travel agency, you mentioned motivational speaking, you got your business. Um, I think you're going to be doing some type of investing or something. I mean, tell you tell us what what's going on with you and uh, these screens that you're going to have funneling not only into your business but also into your personal life. Okay. Well, first and foremost, my company, Pre-K to PhD, we offer, um, I would say, three major streams of income, uh, tutoring, uh, private tutoring, uh, test prep, uh, I'll say four, educational concierge servicing, and then um, we also do consulting. So those are the four that I started with. Okay. Uh, when I did this trip to Costa Rica last year, I added on the educational travel. Um, and then from that, um, I am going to start the coursework to get my certification to become a certified travel agent. So that's six. Okay. Um, that will feed into my business and as well. Um, traveling is another passion of mine. So that so I will also do other types of trips as well too. But my emphasis will be in educational travel. Right. Um, and um, so and then also I've been partnering currently with another organization here in town um, that does professional development. So they actually contract directly with school districts here to come in and teach teachers. Yeah. And then also to do tutorial programs with um, the local school districts. Um, but like I said, it's a business to district contract. So these are huge contracts. And in fact, I'm going to be working on a proposal tonight. Please pray that it goes through. If so, this will be my first humongous um, contract that I received. Now I'm gonna need your help with the proposal. I had somebody supposed to help me, but you know, uh, I, I've learned when you try to depend on people, they don't always uh, show up. So I know that you're dependable. So if you ever get some time, I just need some help with my just initial proposal to all of these nonprofits that I'm gonna be pitching my uh, my services to. If you if you if you can help me out, that'd be another yeah. little stream of income for you, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. But yes, you, you know, you have helped me so much, Evan, that um, it, it's absolutely going to be reciprocated. No problem. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we're talking six or seven now. The reason why I want I want to, uh, I'm mean, talking about the streams that you have going into your business because if your business should fold, you still have that skill set that could bring that could become a stream for you. I mean, because you are your business at this point as you're growing and developing and getting more employees or whatever the case may be. But these streams, these ideas are coming from you or coming from your board, board, of, uh, board of directors or something. And they have become streams of income for the business, which could then be streams of income for you. If, if the business should ever fold, you've already got this skill set of things that you created that you can go out and make money on, on your own. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I took the advice. My um, my in-laws were business people, uh, very successful, and they told me something. Now, I, I, I am of the vein of establishing your own and working for yourself. But my father-in-law told me this. Always keep yourself a square job or at least the opportunity to enter into one that just in case everything folds and you need to deflect to uh, just getting some income temporarily, have yourself a square job that you can go back to. And mine is my teaching certification. And I, and I speak Spanish and I'm in Texas. So if all else fails, I can go get a job te teaching bilingual education next week until I recover. You, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but not that I ever want to do that ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but just in case. Yeah. Uh, it's sitting there and, and and I can utilize it whenever. Look at that. So so you even have a you even have a uh, a plan in case the plans don't work. I mean you have something you can kind of you have a fallback plan just you have a just in case plan. Just in case. <laughs> and here's the deal, guys. Um, for everybody that's here, what we're talking about is here's the deal. You can always go back to what you used to do. You can always yeah. go back because because what you've learned has brought you up to this point. You're not going to forget how to ride a bike. You're not going to forget how to do whatever it is that you used to do. You can always go back to that. When you look at your resume, you're going to be like, I can go back to this, go back to this, I can go back to this. I, go back. I might not ever want to go back there, but it is feasible or possible for me to go back because I have already 
learn that skill set. And so, um, and so, yeah, so as we're talking about uh, your multiple streams, so Renata, when I first asked this question, you said two, but now you're saying six. Well, and, and actually, you know, there's a seventh and an eighth coming, which is investing. However, I've taken a step back and realized that I have to get my personal finances in order, which made me take a step back and said that I need to make some lifestyle changes. Yeah. So I'm right now currently working out and losing weight and uh, getting healthier, adjusting my sleep habits. I'm um, doing time. I'm in a group of sisters. We come together. We pray. We do time management exercises. Um because that's the area that I'm I'm not good in whatsoever. And I realized to get to that next level, I needed to step back. So, but at the same time, I'm still building these streams of income. And once I get all of the the the, the groundwork or prepping the field, I believe, as Mr. Beatles uh, referred to it, that stuck with me. Um, so that's that's my process now. I'm prepping the field so that when uh, my businesses become um, more profitable and I'm able to you know, handle some of my personal financial situations, um, I'll know what to do in terms of investing. So eventually, eventually, uh, my plan is to make invest, you know, my investment income, the bulk um, of what supports me so that I can, I can truly have the freedom to travel, um, to, you know, educate my child, to do whatever I want to do and um, to serve as I see fit. Yeah, man, you well on your way. So, Miss Renata, I don't know if you are you able to type and maybe put your uh, your uh, website in the comments below. Or do oh, I need absolutely. To do that? <laughs> All <it's> advertised. <laughs> hey, so so here's the deal, guys. I was talking about multiple streams of income. If you got any questions for Renata, I don't know. Maybe she's inspired you. Maybe she's called your mind to go to another level as it relates to the things that you're doing. Uh, you got a couple minutes before she got her next client. So, ask a question if you have one. If not. Um, we're going to let Miss Renata go and get ready for her next uh, next appointment. But uh, what I'm talking about tonight is is, is multiple streams of income. And, and I tell people this. You do not have an income problem. What you have is an idea problem. You don't have an income problem. What you have is an idea problem. Many people are going to work stressed out, sitting in traffic, taking care of the kids and all that stuff. And they never take any time to think. And because you don't take time to think, you don't have the time to get the idea or to capture the idea. The idea goes in and goes out and you're back to your routine. If you can just begin to capture your ideas and do something with them, I'm telling you, you got a gold mine inside of you right here. And it's just waiting on you to extract the gold out, put something into the world so people can pay you. I did not know when I started my retirement review how many people were actually going to pay me for this service. I knew people needed it. But and I knew I had value to bring, but what I didn't know was how many people would connect to me. They're not buying just a retirement review, they're buying me. And I want all of you to understand is well, if you have a business, if you are whatever product or service that you have, they're not buying your product or service, they're buying you. It is you who brings the product or service. And if people don't like you, they're not buying your product or service. Let me repeat that again. They're not buying your product or service, they're buying you. And whatever it is that you're bringing to the marketplace, you got to make sure that you are a person that people want to do business with. That was my competitive advantage, me, my energy, my passion. That was my competitive advantage. It wasn't my knowledge. It wasn't even my sales expertise that I had. It was my absolute presence that was my that is and has always been my competitive advantage. People are buying you. Renata, any last words for the people? I know you got to rock and roll. Um, I do. I do indeed. Um, well, no, I just wanted to say um, just div what, you know, all, all I can tell you is what God has blessed me to do. You know what? Uh, I got, I'm sorry, Ron. I got to ask you about, we had, I have a service called Future by Design that we went through. How did that help you? It helped me a great deal. Um, I, like I said, I am a big idea person. And I am very tenacious. So the ideas that I have, they do eventually come to fruition. But the problem that I had and that Evan has kind of helped me to solve, and I am on track with most of my goals, Evan. I want you to know that. From oh, that session. You know, we got a, um, we got an accountability session coming up. You know that. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> but um, what Evan helped me to understand is that with the Future by Design session was that Unless you put yourself under a, a strict time 
line, a deadline. Um, your goal is just floating out there, you know? And that's what was happening to me. My goals were just floating out there and, you know, eventually I'd catch them. But, you know, I would look back and say, wow, what took me five years to do, I could have done in a year and a half. And so I would highly recommend. Um, it's just it's just very powerful to be able to feed off of the energy of someone else who is helping you to think through your goals, um, your ideals, and, um, you know, your plans for the next year, five years, 10 years. So I'd highly recommend that. I'd also highly recommend his retirement uh, review service because um, I was clueless as to what to do. But just in that one hour conversation, um, I had a plan that, you know, led me in the right direction. I'll tell you this. I've gone to the school district, Evan, and talked to the retirement specialist and told her what I wanted to do. And I'm waiting on the paperwork to process. And um, she was like, that, that that was the smartest plan that she's ever seen anybody uh, <laughs> that left the district. I promise you. Wow. So, um, yeah, this man is the truth. I Like I said, he's my brother from another mother. and. Um, We'll continue to help each other. <laughs> yes, I'm about helping um, another girl. Go ahead. Exactly. And also, I want to say, um, and we may need to talk about this more soon, but to the graduate students out there, there is another way. You do not have to go into the into the academe. Um, use those resources there. I was able, I, I, I was blessed, and I was smart enough once I got in to use the resources and the money, especially if you guys are going to these big R1, Research One, Division One schools that have lots of funds, they're out there for you to tap. And those are the funds that I use to start my own business. So there's a way to play the game and leverage the game to, um, to turn it to your advantage. And so um, I would be more than happy to help anybody. Um, in fact, that is a service that we do at Pre-K to PhD. We help people to, to play the scholarship, the fellowship, the assistantship, the travel grant, all of the grants that they offer game so that you can leverage your degree in the future and um, become well, an entrepreneur. So Renata, I see this service of, uh, or this class or this course of how to leverage your degree. I see something about to really pop off when we get this thing going. Uh, I've been talking about it for a little minute, but uh, it's, co it's coming down the pike, and I'm definitely going to be working with you on that, uh, probably Marty as well, uh, to be able to bring this, because I, I believe that every college student should actually take this class that we're about to create. And that's going to be another stream of income, um, using all this, the uh, experience and the advice uh, that we can give them in, in a one, two-hour class. It's going to take that level of thinking to a whole nother space as it relates to going to school, man. So... Hey, look, we just created another stream of income right here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I don't play, we don't play around. Hey, this is not, this is not, this is, this is a think tank, but this is an act tank as well. We don't play around. <laughs> it is a money bank. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, thanks so much for stopping in. Renata, Thank I know you got some you. things to do, man. Thanks for sharing with the peeps. Now, here's the deal, guys. Uh, you guys say goodbye to Renata. I don't know if she's leaving the stand or whatever. Um, this is the seats are open, guys. I know that some of you guys, I don't know, maybe you need to talk to me, maybe you just need to get it out. Um, but she started saying, I only got two, but as she started to think about it, she has more like six and she's working on eight or nine streams of income. I'm working on 10 streams of income and I'm, I'm really trying to, I was trying to count them out. Uh, I know I've got, so I told you when I left my job, when I quit my job, I had four streams of income. I had my job, I had my part time job, I had my investment. Uh, thing going on and I had created my first service for my business. This is how I walked away from my job. So I'm creating a new service called the exit strategy that's going to, to walk people through how what they need to do in order to leave their job. There's two three things you're going to ask yourself before you quit your job. Number one, how can I replace my income? Number two, how can I replace my benefits? Those are the two things that keep people from walking away from their job, their income and their benefits. So we're going to walk through how you can do that and that's going to be the new service that's coming down the pipe preparing you to fire your boss because you got greatness inside of you. I know some of you guys got some entrepreneur ideas. Some of you guys got some things that's going to bring you a fortune. It's only a matter of pulling it outside of yourself. So that's, that's going to be coming down the pike. I'm working on that as we speak. Uh, another stream or another service that I'm adding to what I already do. So I'm a certified financial educator. 
right now. That's one stream, right? I teach classes. I teach classes, classes. How many of you guys have probably been in one of my classes, right? Uh, not only am I teaching the educational classes, I got a Facebook marketing class that I teach uh, regularly. I've got a stock market class that I teach regularly. And these brings in income. People pay for the knowledge that I bring, right? So I, I, I would I challenge you guys in whatever area that, matter of fact, Anthony, I see you later, Renata. Uh, Anthony, I'm going to be getting with you because we are going to be presenting insurance to the kids. Uh, and so I know that this is a space for you. So it may be an opportunity for us to partner so that um, not only can you uh, present an overview of insurance, but then for those that may be in your state or wherever you may service, that may be an opportunity for you to grab more clients. So that's us working together. I work with the I work with the village. That's what I do because I understand that it, 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 in business and in life, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So you always see me working with people as it relates to us developing our businesses together. Why am I here tonight? I could easily keep this information to myself, but I'm not. I'm here to um, I'm here to help you take your level of thought to a new level because it's when you get to that higher level of consciousness that you can actually start to get uncommon results, which in turn means you're getting uncommon wealth. Most people have one stream of income. I'm talking to you guys about six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 streams of income. Matter of fact, we got Tamisha here. I'm sure, I don't know how many streams Tamisha got because I always see her doing something new, adding something to what she already has. She's very similar to me because I saw she has a book club thing going on. And hopefully if these people are reading this book with you that they're buying the book through you, that's another stream of income that I have. So I do a eight o'clock show um, called um, Money Mind Shift. I got people reading the book, How Rich People Think. And every time I do my show, I tell people, if you want to get this book, buy the book through me. I've already had five people buy the book through me in less than a week. That's another stream of income. It's called affiliate marketing. So for those that don't know what that is, I could go here and tell you about all that, but I'm not getting paid to tell you about that. But I'm saying that's another stream of income that I have, affiliate marketing. So now every time someone buys uh, uh, the book through me, I get a percentage. Right now it's at 4%. Once I get sales, it moves up to 6%. It's a very, very small stream of income, but it's a stream. Some of your streams are going to be large. Some of them are going to be small. Some of them are going to be short term. Some of them are going to be long term. The point is that you have multiple streams so that you're not hung up on where am I going to get my next check? I wake up in the morning to money. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know who and when they're going to buy from me. That's the wonderful thing about being an entrepreneur. You don't know when you're going to get paid, but you know you're going to get paid. Again, let me say that again. You don't know when <laughs> you're going to get paid, but you are going to get paid because hopefully if you're bringing value to the marketplace, people see your value. You've got recognition. You're being in front of people. And then boom, they're saying, you know what? I like this guy. I like what he's doing. He's consistent. He's the truth. He's the real deal. I'm going to buy something from him that's going to help me that's going to bring value into my life and that's what i do now not only do i do that but i do stuff for free because it brings value into people's life now what does the free stuff do for me what does the free stuff do for me it may it makes sure that anytime they think about money they think about ergj anytime they think about investing they think about ergj anytime they think about finances of any sort or coaching of some sort, they think about ERGJ because I'm constantly in front of them. How's that, guys? Think about it. The only reason why you think about McDonald's is because McDonald's is always in front of you. The only reason you think about Waffle House is because Waffle House is always in front of you. So I got to ask you, how often are you in front of your people, your potential customers with your product or service or the ideas that you brought into a tangible place for them to be able to buy from you? How often? Once every week, once every month, once a day, 15 times a day. Let me tell you, McDonald's is not going to stop putting car, uh, putting commercials out for you to go buy a hamburger. So how often are you willing to put yourself in front of the people who have the potential to buy from you? If you wonder why you have an income problem, it's because you're not putting yourself out there enough. I want you to get to the point where people get irritated. They want they you want I want people to unfriend me because I'm so aggressive and I'm so um, intent on being successful. I want people to say, you know what? I don't want to be friends with ERGJ because he wants to be successful and unfriend me because of that. I don't want them to unfriend me because I'm putting stupid stuff out on Facebook and I'm trying to be this, this popular person instead of being a profitable person. Let me say that again. 
Many of you guys are trying to be popular instead of being profitable. Let me repeat that one more time. Too many of you are trying to be popular instead of being profitable. And you wonder why your business isn't taking off. You're trying to be like the crowd. Oh, let me put some world star hip hop stuff up on my timeline. Let me talk about all the negative things that are going on in the news. Let me try to figure out who they're going to vote for and talk about Trump. While you talking about that, I'm talking about the products and services that I offer that bring value into the marketplace, bring value into the lives of the people who which I serve. What are you talking about? Good question to ask, huh? While you're talking, I'm profiting. Now, it's not just about the money, right? It's about what I'm bringing to the marketplace. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, think I got amens and preach and all that stuff. All right, so multiple streams of income. Let me get back to that. So when you start to think about, man, what can I do? I've tried so many things, so many things that didn't work, but many things that have stuck. So I've got an investing. I've got my business certified financial educator. I got social media marketing, um, stock market uh, classes. Um, I've got the future by design service that she talked to you about. I've got um, I've got affiliate marketing. You see that picture that's on my profile? I sell those too. That's seven. That's another. That's a little small stream of income. But every time somebody hits me up like, hey. Uh, I would like to get a picture like that. I get them a picture and I get profit from it. Now, I don't do the pictures. No, no, no. That's another referral system that I have. People go through me to get what they want and I make a little bit of money off of it. That's another stream of income. So I'm up to seven already and I haven't even finished talking about the other things that I got going on. A retirement review, that's eight. That's eight streams of income right now off the top of my head that I'm working with, that I'm providing to the marketplace that's keeping me afloat. When one is down, another one is up. When one is down, another one is up. I'm building a team right now, right? So now I put them on in order for them to teach or to uh, be, have access to the platform that I have. And I make a little bit of money off of what they provide. That's nine. That's just me being a resource or me, me, me being a connector. Me putting a professional in front of the people I'm in the middle. I make some money and they get in order to get bring their product or service in front of 3000 people and that product or service that, that 3000 people may or may not buy whatever it is they got going on. All I'm in, in the middle, I'm the connector. In other words, you can call me Amazon. You can call me Etsy. You can call me, you know what I'm saying? You can call me auto trader. You can call me the stock market. I am the broker that brings the person or the professional in front of the people. How would you like to be in front of 5,000 people today with an opportunity to provide your product or service? Isn't that worth paying me for that? Absolutely. That's nine streams of income. You see what I'm saying? So, so I'm asking you guys to take your level of thought, whatever your ideas are, make it a tangible product or service, and then pilot it. Don't go full board. Here's, here's a problem. Uh, let me tell you what happened to me this week. This week, my website went down. I think it was two days ago, down for 24 hours. I was like, oh my God, oh my, my website. But guess what? God gave me the wisdom to not build my business through my website. My website was down and I was still making money. I only missed like 53 cent for affiliate marketing. Somebody wanted to buy the book through me. They bought it today when the website came back up. So somebody hacked my website, but I wasn't down because I did not build my business through my website. My business can function whether the website is up or not because people don't buy through my website, they buy because of me. Most people didn't even know I had a website when I was doing business. No one ever asked me, Evan, what's your website? Can we check it out? No, no, no. They hear from me, whatever it is, whatever medium they get from me, they go buy through whatever a stream or whatever uh, access I give them to buy from. They never asked me, what's your website? Matter of fact, I would tell you this. When you get a job, how often do people ask you to see your degree? They never ask you to see your degree. You could not even have a degree and they probably, just because you put it on a piece of paper, they say, okay, he's cool, he's legit. Now there's some companies that are gonna check you out, but I'm saying, they never ask you for your degree. No one has ever asked me, hey, can I see your certificate for being a certified financial educator? They have never asked me, I got it. If they ever wanna see it, it can be hanging up on the wall somewhere, but they never ask you to see it. Why? Because what you bring, your expertise comes through your action. People see your expertise through your actions. People see your expertise by the things that you say and how you act and how you do the things that you do. So every day I'm in front of people sharing with them the good news about financial freedom. So I become a trusted partner for them. Not everybody, but for my network, for people that trust in me. And I, it's growing daily. 
They have never asked me for my certificate, but they do ask me for my advice. They do ask me for my product or service. They do ask me for those things. So what I'm trying to do tonight, and the whole point of this show or whatever this talk is, to talk about taking your ideas and actually expound it. So here's what wealthy people do. They can take one single idea and they can create many streams just from this one idea. So say you are, let's just take an example. Give me an example. Somebody, some, I'm going to help somebody out tonight. So if somebody wants to get into a seat, maybe you have one stream of income and you want help tonight on how you can actually form multiple streams of income. The first person to jump in the seat, I'm giving you a free consultation right on the air so we can talk about this thing and how you can take, we, we're going to have what we call a think tank right now. And you're going to be able to see just by having a conversation how you can think about, man, I never thought about that. Oh, that could be a stream. Oh, I can do this and this. So if you're a person saying, I got one stream, I know I want to have multiple streams, but I don't know how to do that. And you want some help tonight. Now's the time. See, see real people, don't, they don't procrastinate. They don't wait. They hit that button right away and say, you know, I'm going to get this right now while I'm here. I don't care what I'm looking like. I don't care if my hair ain't done. I don't care if I'm getting ready for bed. I need this right now because I want to take my income to the next level. You jump into the seat. If not, that's fine because I'll keep on talking. All right. So fantastic. Sounds like we got plenty of people here with multiple streams of income. So what are you doing to... Um, you need to rebrand. So, uh, Miss Harris says she needs to uh, rebrand her website. You know what, Miss Harris, you're gonna always be rebranding your website. Um, you're gonna uh, because it's your baby. You're gonna always feel like there can be something to be improved on your baby. You're gonna always be like, man, you know, something new's gonna. I need to do this, and you're gonna always be evolving your website because that is your local space. That is your um. That is your. Uh, e-commerce place that you have business going on. So I can, I can, I can, I, I'm the same way. I'm like, man, when my website first came out, I was not happy only because I start seeing other websites. Now I got to rebrand and I'm happy right now or somewhat happy, but I'm always like, man, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. It's not a whole rebranding because my branding is me. My branding is what I did before I had a business. I've been branding myself for two years before I stepped out onto my own. People knew me as a finance guy way before I had a business or way before they knew I had a business. Let me put it that way. So we got Anthony coming in. Oh, uh, I know he's got uh, he's uh, he's circling right now. So if you need, you might need to refresh, Anthony. I'm not quite sure. Um, so, yeah. So. So, yeah. So. So what is your website, Miss Harris? Let me check out your website. Or is it you know, you really don't want to show it right now because you're rebranding yourself. What do you do, Miss Harris? Uh, to me, she said, can we get a witness? <laughs> Uh, what do you do or what's your website? Tell me what you do. The link is uh, what on your uh, on your profile? Oh, Harris Coach. I know you don't know. What am I talking about? You change your picture. That's why I don't see it. Now I'm pulling it up right now. Surf I like. Oh, yeah. I haven't I haven't seen your website before though. So you got a free ebook, 30 day self-esteem builder. Workbook, you got a blog. Okay. How long you been um image consulting? So you do when you do image consulting, you're talking about, yeah, I know, but you got a new picture. That's why I didn't recognize it. Okay, you're totally changing everything. Okay, cool. Are you um image consulting means like you deal with makeup and stuff like that, or you just try to help people look more professional? What is I don't, what is the uh, image consulting? The more I was hiding in the white the more What's going on, Anthony? You got that? Uh, what you what you watching, man? <laughs> oh, Blackish is on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's going on, brother? Not much, not much. I figured nobody else was jumping in. I might as well go ahead and get in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, to, uh, yeah. So I told you I might have to partner with you on some stuff, man. When we get into this insurance game, because that's you know I can teach about uh, the basics of insurance, but I think have a professional that that's in that game going to help take that take that class or take that course to a whole nother level uh because there may be some 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 i don't think they're going to be uh, when we get to the adult side there'll be some you know some specific questions they'll ask when we're on the kid side they just you know there may be some examples that could be shared that i might not have um that okay, you, you kind of experience as well man so tell us what you do man well i mean i'm an insurance agent for um uh, all state insurance and um when we talked about the, you're talking about the multiple streams of income, um, t 
to, you know, I, when I first started my agency, I, I started out with three different streams of income, my agency, and then I had two part-time jobs. And because my agency was trying to build my agency, I had to let go of both of those jobs. So um, today I actually signed the papers on another stream of income. So I'm hoping that, you know, it, it works out and becomes fruitful for me. So ba basically my thing has been, like, like you said, trying to find out where I can create additional streams that won't interfere with my main stream. And, Try to find additional streams that won't interfere with your mainstream, right? So now we're talking about streams of income that won't chew up too much of your time. And there's not a conflict of interest, right? Yeah, because, you know, one, one of the parameters that, that, that I have is, you know, with the licenses that I hold, some streams of income I can't take on because I would either have to give up my license or there's certain reporting to the SEC and whatnot that I would have to do. So I have to be careful about what I take on. So I'm always trying to, you know, really, I guess it takes me a little longer to evaluate because there's more at stake yeah. than just saying, okay, I want to do that and then pick it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now there, now of course there's some creative alternative ways, <laughs> which is hey, your kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that's one of the, like, there's one that I'm currently investigating now is, you know, I, I have one, my oldest son is 19, about to be 20 this year. And I'm thinking he'll be perfect to be the, fa you know, be the name of that. Yeah. Be the face of that, be the name of that, be the forefront of that, still bringing it into the household. Absolutely. Exactly. When, uh, exactly. So, Ken, were you saying, does he have any digital product? Well, he's at Allstate. So, Allstate, uh, as an insurance company, they do all the marketing. So, when you say info products, I'm not quite sure. Are, are you are gearing that towards Anthony? I don't know if you. It's just, so he's got a couple of questions asking about digital products and info products. Now, one thing about Anthony that, I, that I'm really seeing, man, I'm really seeing you step up your social media game, man. I'm really liking to see that. I think you, did you take the social media or, or Facebook course, or you just started doing some different stuff? Um, I bought a book from Amazon. Uh, I, I've had it in my, you know, kind of one of those things. You see a book and you think. That'll be great to have in my library. Yeah. And then when I get to it, I'll read it. And right around the time you start mentioning that class, I was halfway through the book. So I was like, well, let me just keep doing what I'm doing and see if I can I can get something there. And once I implement everything from the from the book, then I can go to Evan and say, okay, well, I've tried this, this, that, and the other. Let me take your class and see what's different. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, John, man, thanks so much for joining. What's going on, brother? Oh, we don't have no. no I'm muting myself because I'm about to print something. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Uh, just want to share with you where I'm at in my life, because you're like, where I've where where have I been at? Trust me, like I told you, I've been watching your videos, and actually, when I listen to your videos, I'm at work. Actually, I think I'm just getting to work. I get to work at seven thirty, and. I'm at the stage where I'm just waiting for that moment where, like you, I can tell my boss to, you know, go kick somewhere. rock. Yeah, kick <laughs> rock. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I've been doing in the meantime is that I've been saving like crazy. I save 10% gross, not net, of my income. And that 10% I put into a, my savings account. Then I have a, another account for my business. Um, Right now, it's just me saving for that day because I, I have a, I told my aunt, I have an exact day when I'm going to quit my job. I know this day I'm quitting my job because as you know, I don't know if you know, but I'm going back to school to get my MBA because my, my passion is business and technology. So I'm going in for business analytics. That's where my passion is. At. I, like look at, I like looking at business. I like looking at the numbers. Uh, before I was a business major, I was a math major. So that's, I finally found something where I can take my passion for numbers and my passion for business and, com and combine it. Also, my love for technology. Um, but what I'm at right now is that I'm just trying to save up. So just in case. But my problem is, is that if I could just take a week, because I work four days a week, but I work 12-hour shifts. 
So my days off, I'm so exhausted. I don't even feel like doing anything. So right now it's like me trying to find the time where I can build my skills up because I know what I want to do. I want to do software development from the back end, not the front end, but the back end. And I already bought the courses on how to do that. I have like, you know how when Udemy has like courses on sale for like $10 courses and $12 mm -hmm. courses? Yeah. I have so many of those. So I have the, I have the skills. I have the programs. I have the connections. In fact, my friend um, and business partner, Terrell, um, Tamisia, she met him. He's on Blab from time to time too with me. And he just sent me a, we I did a business plan together, um, competition together, excuse me. We won first place. We both won um, iPad Airs. Um, and our business plan, I, I can tell you what our business plan was. It was basically um, industrial, um, urban industrialized um, greenhousing. So taking a trailer and putting it into a food desert and growing sustainable food there for communities that don't have access to it. And taking, and then our next phase was taking abandoned buildings because we know that America used to be an industrialized city and because all the jobs went overseas. Here, I'm in Philadelphia. We have a lot of abandoned warehouses. Taking those abandoned warehouses, some of them have been converted to schools, but the schools here are closing as well. Um, taking those abandoned warehouses and converting them into greenhouses. So if you go on YouTube or on Google, you'll see in Canada, it's a big business taking and creating um, natural, natural fruit, uh, natural fruits, and vegetables, and growing it indoors in a climate control and a climate control with no asbestos, no pesticides, all some of it organic, some of it just natural. There's a difference between organic and natural. Um, and growing that, and that's what our business model was going to be. And he just printed me out some ideas that he was doing out, throwing around. He's a hustler, like he, he, <laughs> he does voiceovers, and he basically works for himself. He hustles. Me, I'm just an employee with a dream. So okay, I'm at the well, point. Of my, go ahead. Let me ask you something. Man. Sure. I'm, I'm hearing a I'm lot from you right now. So let me ask you this: How long have you been working at your job? This this twelve hour um, um, job. Yeah. I started in July last year because I got it right. in May. All right. So when's the last? What's the last thing you did in your life that you were like super excited about? Maybe it was a trip that you went on. Maybe it was Christmas. Maybe it was seeing the the family. What What's the last thing you did? You like super excited about? You was gonna do it no matter what. You went. You had a good time. What was that last thing that you can recall? When I went to Chicago. Um, what happened in Chicago? Go ahead. Well, it was my second time going to Chicago. My first time was just for spring break, which I loved. The, my second time was I was a part of this program called, um, well, not, it was called the LEAP program. It was with the John Marshall Law School, because at the time I wanted to go to law school, then turns out that's not what I wanted to do. But I was excited about it. I had to pay for my own way. The program was paid for, but I had to pay for my own way to get there. And I went there by train and I had a phenomenal time. And during that summer, I was also in summer school, but um, that's when I was most excited. The last time I was probably excited. So mm -hmm. when you went to this place, when you took this trip to Chicago, did you say that, oh, I work a four hour, four day, 12 hour week job. I'm too tired to go. No, actually, I wasn't working at the time, but no, <laughs> I was actually oh. living on student loans. So. <laughs> okay. So so here's here's my challenge to you. It sounds to me like you 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 found some things that you want to do. I think you know where you're going in the future, but you haven't found something that you can do right now to get you to that future place. And I would tell you that you're not tired, you're uninspired. Uh it's something that you got to rekindle inside of you to get you to take steps towards wherever it is that you're going. In other words, progress. Progress is what keeps people inspired, keeps people motivated. And they know, "Hey, I just took a step today. I'm one step closer to where I want to be." I don't know what that is for you because I heard quite a few things. I know that you found a lot that you don't want to do. You mm -hmm. found a couple of things that you want to do. Business analytics seems to be that passion point for you. And you may be doing some things in business analytics for the business that you are partnered with uh, your, your partner. Mm -hmm. um, that might be your space, uh, your uh, partner. Your partner, 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 partner. Oh, that was an echo. Uh, oh, there goes to Anthony. Um, but uh, I think I'm coming in clear now. But there's some things that you can, there's something that you can do right now. So there's a reason why you haven't actually taken those classes yet that you have paid for. Mm -hmm. You're not inspired to take them. Like, I don't know whether you may already know that stuff or may, you know, I just got it. It's in the, it's, it's, it, I'll get to it when I get to it. But you're not inspired to take them. Let me ask you why not. 
Fear. Fear. I have a, right. I have so a is big it, fear. Is it a fear? I, I found that people don't have a fear of failure. They have a fear of success. Would you say that's, that's what I was going to say? Fear of success. Hey, hey, uh, Jonathan, what is it that, that you're doing right now? The tw I think you said something about IT and, and networking or something like that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a financial processor for a um, mutual fund company. I mentioned the company that okay. I worked for earlier, but yeah, I work for one of the largest mutual fund companies. I'm a financial processor. In other words, I'm an overpaid data entry operator. So all I do is set a computer. <laughs> <laughs> all I do is set a computer and type and process checks and paperwork. And so when you was talking to um, Renata earlier, I, I, I know that stuff. I know the IRAs, Roth, um, mutual funds, trusts, 429s. I, I know all that. I just learned that by being there, even though I have I had no interest to go into finances. I, in fact, when I went to college, are you day trading? No, I'm just mm. I just process paperwork. That's it. Well, so, so Jonathan, you no, no, no. Go I'm saying like on your own, you're saving a lot of money, but you have the knowledge because you deal with it every day. But are you using that to make money for yourself? Uh, no. What I'm doing right now is that I'm saving money to get out of debt. I'm doing the Dave Ramsey Dave Ramsey's baby steps. So now my next step is to get out of debt. And then after that to save my money, then because I'm trying to build, I'm trying to build multiple streams of income. My my main goal is to, but before I go back to college, um, part time, is to not have to take out a student loan because if I get accepted to the school I'm going to, then I'm going on a full ride as far as tuition. But hopefully, I'm trying to start my business so I don't have to take out a loan to live off of. But um. So, mm -hmm. so let me ask you this, Jonathan. I, I keep hearing a lot of trying to versus mm -hmm. going. Right. So, uh, this, I think this is coming back to the spirit of success. You know, you know mm -hmm. what you want to do. And I would even say that you know what the next step is. But for some reason, you're delaying the next step. In, your own, in your own personal space, you're like, I, I know. It's like it's, it's, something is nudging you to move forward and you stopping your own self because of the spirit of success. You know you got greatness inside of you. You know you got a bright future. You know you're going to be out of debt. You know you're going to be wealthy, but you also know you got to start right now. Right. No, right. Evan, have you ever heard I think the Bible says for a man, talks about a man that, that he knows to do right, but he chooses not to? Yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that is me. I'm just, that's me all the way. That's me. I, I know what to do, but do I do it? No. Um, it, it's funny because when I went back to school, I was very passionate, very driven about doing it. I worked two, like I worked two or three jobs to go back to school. Then when I finally got back to school and got my degree, I was like, okay, what's next? Because I've been in school for so long that I didn't know what to do after that. Um, I mean, I know what to do. I, <laughs> let's just say, I know what to do. I've yeah. already bought, I've, I have my business plan. I did it. I already bought live plans so I can create multiple business plans if, as, as I go along. So I know what to do. It's just me never sitting down and just focusing on what I need to do. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not even but, sitting down. It's about you getting up and taking action. So here's the deal, Jonathan. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're connected to me for a reason, right? And I'm not the guy, I am my brother's keeper and I'm not going to allow you to continue to put yourself as a last priority, put your dreams as a last priority. I want your dreams to become your top priority because it's in your dreams, man, that you're going to feel, you're going to get this, this exuberance back that you had when you went to Chicago. It's in your dreams, working towards building that thing up, which you know is next for you, and you're going to get that inspiration back. No matter how many hours you're working, you're going to still be inspired to work on your dream. But you're not inspired right now because you haven't started to work on your dream. So let me ask you this, man. Are you going to wait until you're desperate to start working on your dream, or are you going to just go ahead and get inspired to do it? See, most people, they, they change because of inspiration or desperation. Abdul will tell you that. And so are you going to wait until you're desperate and you wait until you're back against the wall? Are you going to wait until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of your job? You've already kind of mastered everything at your job. You kind of know everything. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I got all this, my math stuff. I'm cool on that IRA stuff. I know all of that. But now I'm at this place where, man, this is this is where I want to go. So, so, so until I take that first step, 
I won't get any momentum going towards there until I take that first step. And I know what the next step is. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, I would say desperation. And then I'll tell you why. Um, today was it. Today was it. I actually text one of my friends who works for another mutual um, mutual asset management company. Actually, actually, it's larger than the one I work for. And I told him, like, this is it. I hate my job. I said, <laughs> I got to get I, I because this is what happened. Um, if I can be transparent because I'm with family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um my boss, my my bosses, all of our boss, all the bosses, and the um I might as well call them assistant bosses, they had a meeting today with their higher ups. And I didn't notice it, and then somebody pointed out that all the higher ups are white men. And I'm like, okay, I've seen that before. But then I didn't notice that all of, most of my bosses, except for one, all of them are white. They're either white or young. And I was like, wow, this is what corporate America is really about. <clears throat> and I've I worked in corporate America before, but not to this extent. And it just made me sick. The the racism just makes me sick. Like, I know I, I'm not I'm not delusional. I, I know we don't live in a post-racial society just because we got a black man in the White House. I know that. I, I, I'm pretty much aware of that. But it was just seeing that just made me so nauseous. I said, they think, and, and of course, when you're working with money, finances, they don't want us to know how to become wealthy. They don't want us to know about mutual funds. They don't want us to know about the stock. They don't want us to be educated about that. And they have no, and then they, when I was also in college, I was a part of the Thurgood Marshall um, Leadership Institute, which is AKA Assimilation 101. But um, when I went there, I saw all these different companies and in case you know, Thurgood Marshall is for um, students that go to um, state, state funded HBCUs. And they were there saying, oh, we're looking for this, we're looking for that, we're looking for this. And, but when you would see them, they, they weren't trying to hire anyone. So they could say in the media, oh, yeah, we went here, we went there, we looked for them, we, we searched, we're searched for them, but we can't find anybody that's qualified, which is a bunch the of... The Rooney Rule. Pardon? <laughs> I'm sorry, what you say, Evan? The, the Rooney Rule in football. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm like... I, when I saw that, I said, I, I can't do corporate America. I said, it's either I live like this and not be happy or I build my own corporation, which is my dream ever since I was, oh, well, 10 years ago. I'm not going to say my age. 10 years ago, that was my dream to build my own corporation. So uh, to answer your question, it's desperation and it desperation because the clock is ticking. I have until July something. I can't remember which date. To July to do this because it's a sink or swim sort of thing. Um, the young lady saying earlier that, hey, um, she said that, you know, I, her, her father-in-law said, you know, keep a little, uh, at least have a job on the side. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be <laughs> like, I, I don't want to have a backup plan. This is, I want to be like, this is it. This is it. This is Gotta it. Go for it. Exactly. Gotta go for it. Anthony, you got anything to add, man? I know you uh, you kind of face that too, right? With your with your this position, you, at some point you say, you know what, I'm just gonna do something different because this this. <laughs> well, for for me, it it, it happened in stages. Um, you know, I got divorced first, and so you know when you watch your 401k and everything like that kind of dwindle down, and you just hand it over to somebody, and you've been working you know for years to do it. So I said, well, one, um, I'm gonna have to do something different. And then two, at that point, I realized that if I want to get up and walk out of here today, I was not in a position to do it. So I, basically, I had to hold my tongue for everything. And then my manager at the time said, I'm going to find you a, a mentor, somebody that looks like you, that can teach you how to, you know, go up in the ranks of the company. And so they introduced me to this guy fellow black man, and he tells me, you need to find a golden boy and help him get promoted. And as he gets promoted, he'll pull you up. Wow. And I said, what do you mean? 
He said, find the white boy that they favor and help him get promoted and he will pull you up. And he said, that's what I did. And I looked at him and I said, I'm the freaking golden boy. So I need somebody to pull me up so I can pull up other people because there are other people that look like me that are qualified, but they're not getting those opportunities. And so he said, as long as you think you're the golden boy, you'll never get promoted. So that was my second thing. The third thing was um, I was in a department basically running it. So I got pulled by a vice president and say, hey, we're going to start an outsourcing uh, division and we want you to get over there, get it started, put the foundation together, do all the documentation for it, and then I need you to run this. We got a 10-year time frame for it. So while I was doing this, and, you know, you walk into an office and you know, you have to tell 30 people that they're about to lose their jobs and they're going to have to train the people in India how to do their jobs and then they're going to be let go. That is a difficult conversation to have with people day in and day out. You know, and it gets to a point where it becomes, when it becomes easy, that lets you know that you've been doing it too long. (laughs) (laughs) And, And so when the conversations were becoming so easy for me to have with people about them losing their jobs, I started talking to them about, you know, what have you always wanted to do? We're going to pay you to go do that. We're going to give you a service package. We're going to pay you out for the rest of the year. This is what your package looks like. Go and find your passion while we're paying for it. Mm. Don't go out and buy a brand new car. Go out and find your passion. So I was telling people to do that. but (laughs) But I wasn't doing it because... This project is going to be over. And so year five came and I was looking at a McDonald's franchise, a Subway franchise, Jack in the Box franchise. I was looking at all these different things. And one day I spun around in my home office and I was looking at my bookshelf. And I said, all the books that I read for fun are about insurance, about investing, about getting out of debt, those kind of things. So why haven't I thought to become an agent? And so I said, well, let me find out what I need to do in order to be an agent. You're breaking up. So I go to lunch, you know, so I'm trying to find people to be agents for State Farm. So he gave me his car and I didn't think anything about it. I put it in my little, in my little briefcase thing and I kept on going. So a friend of mine who I had laid off a year prior to, called me and she said, Anthony, you would be a great State Farm agent. I'm going to give you this guy's phone number. You need to call him. She gave me the same phone number to the guy that I had met in the restaurant. So to me, I'm always looking for where God is working in my life. And so by her calling me out of the blue saying, you would be a great State Farm agent and giving me that guy's phone number, I said, well, this is my cue to call him. And so I come home that afternoon, log into Facebook like I do all the time, And all the ads, I had never even searched State Farm before. But all the ads on the side were all State Farm ads. So I said, well, obviously, that's God telling me I need to call this guy. So I called him, went through the process, uh, uh, was in in the agent training program. And basically, the agent that I learned from had been one of the number one agents for like 30 years. He had been in the top five agents in the country for like 30 years. And older white guy, you would never know he's a multimillionaire by looking at him. And he said, you know what? I have never made a black successful agent. And so I'm looking at him like, he said, don't take that the wrong way. He said, there's some good black agents out there, but there are no agents that are on my level or some of these other guys' levels. And that's what I want to do for you. I want to teach you what I do so that you can become like me in the top of whatever company you decide to be with, even if it's not State Farm. So long story short, I ended up at Allstate. Um, But through that process, I was paying attention to what the universe was telling me. I was looking at everything. I was meeting certain people for a reason. People that had been in my life for a while that now they were gone, they were coming back and telling me, oh, you should do this. Oh, you should do that. And so I was kind of like Jonathan said, I was standing, I was stopping myself from taking that step forward because I was afraid. 
But that I always remember that golden boy conversation. And uh, what really caused me to, to make that transition and really get serious about it is I hadn't got laid off at this point, but I knew it was coming because all the leadership above me had all been replaced. And so here I am, I had been running this team for five years now, and I have a new team of people that come in to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. Now, I've been doing it successfully for four years now. It's a 10 year project and I'm almost done with every process that they wanted me to outsource. And so at that point I said, you know what? These people aren't here for my success. I don't know why they're here, but maybe they're here so that I would get so agitated with them that I leave. Maybe that's what it is. And so I basically started working from home every day so I wouldn't have to see these people. And you know, <laughs> when you're a project manager in the Philippines every day, you know, you can sit at home and do that. And so I never would go into the office. So one day my manager called me. She was like, we never see you. You need to start coming into the office at least three days out of the week. Now, I'm the type of person that I read the HR manual. And when you're an exempt employee, full-time day is four hours. Mm -hmm. So I would go into the office for the first four hours of the day, and I would leave at lunchtime and go home and finish up the rest of my meetings. And so we would constantly be battling about that. And I said, you know, they're really trying to push me out. And so when I finished my last project, I said, well, I gave him my last proposal for the next project. I said, the next project is to diminish my team. My team needs to be disbanded because we're, we're making money for doing nothing. And I said, I will volunteer for the first layoff. And so I did exactly what I had been telling other people to do. I let them pay me to go do my passion. And when I got laid off, I went into the State Farm Training Program. I did that for 18 months. They, I couldn't get the office where I wanted to get to. All state called and said, hey, we got, a, we got an office in a location that you want to be in. And here I am. I have my own business with my name on the door. And it's on, it's on the sign that says Anthony Ooh. Sims Allstate. So, Anthony, you know, I'm ready to chime in. Evan Ponce, I'm going to get to your question. I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I, I want to talk for what Anthony talking about, but you asked, is college a good investment? I would say college is a good investment if you have a plan. If you just too many people go to school just to go to school, that is their exactly. secondary thing. Oh, I want to make more money. Let me just go back to school. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a plan, going to school won't help. You need a plan first H. before you go to school. <laughs> or you just gonna waste a whole bunch more time and get even more debt just because you didn't have a plan. Have a yeah. plan first. Have a conversation with someone that can help you get a plan before you go get into debt. And repeat that again. At least have a conversation with someone. If it's a guidance counselor, if it's a life coach, if it's a whatever, have some, have a conversation with me if you need to before you go and accrue more debt. We need to have a plan for where you're going in your mm -hmm. life. Going to school is not going to help if you don't have a plan. You're just going to school just to go to school because you can't think of anything else to do. Now, getting to what um, Anthony said, he said a couple things. Number, number one thing he said that he, he allowed them to pay him um, in order to go find his passion. And now we're in a time of the year where a lot of people are getting paid back some money in order for them to go and find their passion. Are you using your refund to go and find your passion, to go and build your business, to go and start something new? Or are you going to go and do what you've always done with your refund and blow it? You got an opportunity probably right now or something to use that little bit of money to drop a seed into your future. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to are you going to use it to finally go after your passion, to finally go after your dream, to finally build this thing that's been sitting in your heart forever? Are you going to use it? And secondarily, Anthony, you said that uh, as we talk, what was I going to say next? I don't lost my point. <laughs> I lost my point. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my goodness, I don't lost my point. What were you talking about? Oh geez, they'll come back to me. At first, I didn't know who Abdul was, and I'm like, oh, the guy from North Dakota or South Dakota. One of them. I can't remember which one it is. But, I mean, going back to what Evan was saying, I mean, when, when you know, a lot of times we don't take advantage of those opportunities. Like I said, like you, like you were just saying, your tax refund is an opportunity for you to start an LLC 
and mm-hmm. open up a business bank account or just invest it in a stock mm-hmm. or something like that that's going to give you a return. And a lot, like a lot of people, the first thing that they do when they get their return is they go shopping. They put a they buy furniture. And yeah, if you know, notice, and if you notice that yeah, all on the call, I know text, Evan, you probably see it on my Facebook a lot of times that you know. But first thing I talk about is when you get that tax re- return, if you have have not gotten life insurance. Yeah, he froze up. You got to, uh, you want to refresh Anthony? He's talking about life insurance. Um, you want to refresh Anthony? You got, we only got the audio right now. I don't know if you can hear us or not. Um, the, oh, the other thing that, Anthony, oh, go ahead, Jonathan. I know you were about to say something. I was going to say one thing that I've noticed is that you notice that every time tax refund time comes is that's when there's the big furniture sale and all of a sudden there's like 0% interest rate. They do that for a reason. They do that for a reason because they know that people are going to spend their money. I'm, for some reason, growing up, I used to hear that a lot. Like, oh, tax refund time is coming. I need to get some new furniture. And now I'm like, why, why do that? In fact, actually, there was an article that came out not so long ago that there are more people quitting their jobs than getting either fired or laid off. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the other piece that I want to bring in. I'll do. I know you're here. Got, got some things to share. Uh, Anthony mentioned uh, he was listening to the universe. He success leaves clues. So he was paying attention to what was going on. He was following the clues. And so I want to ask you guys this question: <clears throat> How can people? Because people are so distracted, they're so busy with life that they can't even pay attention to the clues that life is given to them. So what do you guys do to put yourself in the position? I'm going to exclude you, Jonathan, because I don't think you listening to the clues. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things That's that fine. you guys do? <laughs> I, I can accept it. That's fine. <laughs> what are some things that you do in order to be able to pay attention? Because many people, they hear that, but they don't. They be like, I don't see no clues. And I believe that it's happening to them each and every day. That opportunity comes across your path. It's just a matter of you being able to recognize it. And then number two, being, a, being prepared for it. Now, Jonathan, I would say that you're preparing for opportunity. You're saying I'm putting money away. I'm 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 putting myself in position to take advantage of this big opportunity when it comes. But then I would also say, Jonathan, that you got to make the opportunity. The opportunity is waiting for you to go knock and for you to kick that dang door in when you get the gumption to go do that. I'm, I'm gonna coach you later because I know I know me and you boys, so I'm, I'm not gonna do this on air. All right. <laughs> so I, I one of the things that you do in order to put yourself in position that you can pay attention to the clues that the universe is, is leaving you, Abdul. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. By the way? Okay. Yes, well, the first thing first thing to do, and this is, this is the uh, morning routine, is uh, meditation. So there's an acronym called SAVERS. So it's S-A-V-E-R-S. The S stands for silence. So the first thing you should do in the morning is meditate. The A stands for affirmation, which you should, be, if you can't, if you don't believe you're gonna do can do something, you're not gonna do it. Then the V stands for visualization. You have to visualize, you have to see it in your mind. The E stands for exercise. It's good to get the endorphins going. The R stands for reading. And the S, which is basically one of the the, the question that you you you're asking is is for scribble, which is writing in a journal. You know, uh, you have to listen to the universe. So if, if you're not sitting in silence, you can't do it. And then journaling is is a great tool also just to see what's going on in your day. What what happened in your day? Did some did you see something on a billboard? Did someone come and tell you some great words, or did you hear something on a, a podcast or something like that? And you're right, we we have clues all around us, but we have to just uh, we have to pay attention. We have to sit still and listen. Anthony, that's some good stuff. I hope you guys. I, so I think they taking notes. Y'all better be taking notes. We giving out free stuff today. Yeah, you get it. You get it. Some advice. You get some advice. Y'all get advice today. <laughs> 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 Anthony, man, what's some things that you do, man, to to put yourself in the position to hear from the universe? Well, um, I guess the the simple thing is. Uh, I pay attention. I mean, I'm, I'm nosy as all get out and I'm always searching for information and I'm always looking to be the better, be a better me tomorrow than I was today. And so when, when things happen, I pay attention. Like, you know, I hear about a lot of people always talking about the ads on Facebook. They hate them. 
I pay attention to that kind of stuff because that oftentimes tells me what I've been searching. So if I have a bunch of crap over there, a lot of times that lets me know I need to change up what I'm reading or what I'm looking at online and, and that kind of thing. So I pay attention to that. The people that are in my life, I listen to what they're saying. I mean, even the most negative person that I come in contact with is, is what they're saying going to benefit me? If it doesn't, then I try to remove them from my life. And I'll give you an example. One of my best friends when I was working in corporate America, um, when I told him that I was going to start my own agency, he was very negative. Oh, man, you don't want to do that. You need to get you a good job, paying you about $60,000, $70,000 a year. You got kids, you're single income. You know, you don't need to do it. So what that told me was, is that he was afraid. He was more afraid for me than I was for myself. So I had to limit my time talking to him while I was chasing my dream. Mm. And so, you know, a month went by and then he would call me and say, man, I hadn't heard from you in a while. What you been up to? And I would say, building my business, building my dream. How's it going? Don't want to talk to you about it right now because I don't want you to feel upset for some of the things that I'm doing. How cool, but I'll holler at you later. And then I'll call him another month and say, hey, I'm still here, still doing good, still building my business. Holler at you in another month when everything is going the way it's supposed to be going. So I would kind of limit my time with people that were going to be negative or that were going to try to dissuade me from moving forward. Because if I, if I constantly talk to them, it would get in my mind, and then I'll be thinking more about what they're saying than what I. Absolutely, you keep breaking up, Anthony. I know I need to be going. I don't know if you're um, still talking. Another thing that I used to do, I mean, <laughs> I read all the time. You know, like you always say, you got to have a library. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. So. I do a lot of digital books. I do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, books on on uh, MP3 that I listen to in the car, um, and I do a lot of reading. Like I have a book by my bed that I'm in the middle of. I have a book on my desk at my office that I'm in the middle of. Uh, I'm listening to, listening to Thinking Grow Rich on MP3 for about the millionth time. Um, that was a graduation gift when I was in high school. My uncle gave it to me, and he was like, if you read this book, you will eventually become a millionaire. I don't know when, but if you read this book, you will eventually become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. And so now, Anthony, I had the that book in high school. Sound, that book sounds familiar, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, and, so, and so, like something I tell people to read each and every day, and they still won't pick up the book. <laughs> of mm -hmm. course, by the way, if you want to get the book, you can get it through me. Let me go ahead and put my website but, down But now. see, here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. I got that book in high school. I didn't read it until I graduated from college. But the thing is, I had that book. And it went with me to, it went with me to college. It moved from Rhode Island to Dallas with me. Everywhere I've gone, that book has been with me. And then um, I was transitioning from a job that I hated. I was working in the finance department at American Honda. And I hated that job. And I was redoing my resume. And I was trying to find something that would inspire, you know, um, um, what is it called? The, the top part of it when you, like your opening on your resume. Mm -hmm. And so I was thumbing through that book and I saw something about, trans, you know, transformational management or something like that. And I read that, that paragraph over and over and over again. And so that I wrote my cover letter from that chapter. Yeah. And then I said, well, you know what? Then I got I got a job. And I said, you know what? I need to read this book. And then I read it the first time. And then, you know, whenever things in my career weren't going the way they were supposed to go, I would read it again. And then I would read it again. And then I got it on a CD and I would listen to it. And then I would read the book again. And then I would read the book again. And then I got it on MP3 and it's been on rotation. And my kids can probably recite that entire book, they've heard it so much. That's good. But, but the thing about it is, things that have inspired me in the past, I will go back to it and I will read it. Like there's some books that I haven't even finished because at the time I wasn't feeling it, 
But then different things in my life happen. I'll see it. I'll pull it out. I'll start reading it again, and I'll finish it. But the thing about it is a lot of people, when, something, when they don't feel something right away, they get rid of it and don't think about it. But you might, you might not be in a space to receive that information at that time. So my thing is, you know, you always heard that people come into your life for a reason or a season. And to me, um, I'm not afraid to end somebody's season and I'm not afraid to find out what that reason is. Freezing up again. That's that passion going. Yeah, that's that passion. Hey, I know he's probably trying to talk. So here's the deal, guys. He mentioned the book. <laughs> this is a great plug. Affiliate like, marketing one on one. At first, I just kind of oh, observed. I never said a thing. I just observed. <laughs> so, so, so after observing for a while, then I made a comment, and then I said, "Okay, well, you know what? He does his phone conference every other Saturday. Even though I, I that's when I have my barbershop appointment. I would sit in the car and listen." until it was time for me to get in the chair. And then I would go get, I, every week I started, you know, every other week I started listening, listening, listening. And I was like, okay, well now he's on blab. Let me see what that's about. And so uh, we've been connected for a while, but we've just started interacting here recently. Because in the very beginning, I wasn't ready to receive what you were saying. But the more and more I saw your message, the more and more you were in my life, the more and more I started to say, you know what? He has something very valuable. And then when I got invited to sit into the chair like I'm doing right now, because the first time I actually got in one of these seats, I was definitely afraid to get on this camera and talk. Now, I've been doing video conferences for the last 10 years in my corporate career. And I've done phone conferences with people all over the world. But for some reason, I was afraid to get in this. And then I said, well, you know what? These people might be smarter than me in some instances, but I still have some value to share. Mm -hmm. Whether they like it or not, it's going to touch somebody. And so what I can do is I can get in here, say my piece. I can hit that X and get up out of here. Yeah. And somebody said we're all off topic. We got, we, we talk. Hey, let me let you guys know something. This is Blab. And I let people let their voice be heard. Whenever we talk, we go wherever we need to go. And we don't let nothing stop us from some topic that we put up on the screen. You guys are here for a reason. Now, Back to what I was just about to do, Anthony talked to y'all about this book, How Rich People Think. We're going through this. It's a 100-day journey. We're on day number 44, 45 tomorrow. I'll do the show at 8 a.m. every morning. If you want to get this book, you can get it through me, www.ergj.net. This book will change. The reading this book, not just getting it, not just buying it, not just having it, reading this book or sharing with us as we go through the book is going to change the way that you think. So you can change your results. It's going to help you to see what rich people are doing that maybe you aren't doing. So you can start to implement some new things into your life so that you can be rich. And one of those things, obviously, we're talking about multiple streams of income. It's, it's the nonlinear way of thinking. Instead of thinking about, hey, I'm going to go to the job. Hey, I need to get some more money. OK, I'm going to work some overtime. Hey, I need to get some more money. OK, I'm going to go back to school. You're doing all these things to find a way to give up more of your time in exchange for money. Rich people don't do that. Rich people find a way mm -hmm. to sell what's inside of them, their creativity, their thoughts, their knowledge for money. Are you doing that? This is how you start to create multiple streams of income. You don't have an income problem. What you have is an idea problem. And until you can get into your gold mine, which is right here, and you can extract the gold, which is the ideas, which comes from creativity. You had creativity when you were a child. You lost it when you became an adult. Mm. Let me repeat that again. You had creativity when you used to go outside with a tennis ball and make a game. You go out there with some acorns and have acorn fights and make a game. You were creative when you were a child. You found ways to have fun. And some of those fun things have become games that people get paid millions of dollars to do. How do you think football came around? How do you think basketball came around? Somebody had a ball and said, let's do something, Johnny. And they created this game. You had creativity when you were a child. You got it squeezed out of you when you became an adult. And my goal is to help you tap back into your creativity, your gold mine, extract the ideas, bring those ideas to reality, tangible products and services for the, that brings value to the marketplace to help you get rich. 
All right. And, 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 and I know we were talking about multiple streams of income and you mentioned something a little early and I don't think a lot of people caught it. Uh, referring, lots of businesses have referral programs. So just referring somebody to another business can be another stream of income for you. Hmm. Let me say that again. Referring your friends and family to other businesses can be a stream of income for you for the right person. Hey, okay. Anthony, here's the as deal. an insurance agent, I pay for referrals. Here's the deal, Anthony. Most people refer, but they don't get paid. They refer all day long. Hey, go see this movie, but they don't get paid for it. Yeah. Hey, go eat at this restaurant, but they don't get paid for it. Many people are referring people to places and, 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 and people in order to do business, but they're not finding a way to profit for it from themselves. Affiliate marketing. <laughs> Go ahead, Abdul. You got anything to add? No, I was just going to say affiliate marketing. You know, a lot, a lot of like uh, one thing you can add to your website is just put resources. And on those resources, you can have where to get your website, where to get a, a virtual assistant, where to get um, tax preparation or whatever. And every time that someone clicks on a link and buys something, you get a percentage of that payment. So that's affiliate marketing is a big, a big deal, a big deal. Absolutely. And I know, Jonathan, yeah. you can implement some of these things, man. You're the, you're the, you're the uh, analytics, you're the IT person, you're the math person. Man, we got to get you going, brother. <laughs> well, I had been started doing something because it's one thing to call myself a digital biz dude and not really doing anything with it. It was actually, I came up with that because I wanted to do marketing and, and technology, uh, marketing and business. It was actually an homage to my mentor, the small business lady, Melinda Emerson. That's how I came up with the name. Yeah. So now, yeah. So now it's time for me to actually do what I'm. I I call myself the digital biz dude, and I'm and my branding is all over social media except for Facebook as a digital biz dude. But and here's what I would say, Jonathan. I, and I'm again, I'm gonna call you out, man, because that's what I do, man. I just make sure I, I, I am my brother's keeper. If you if you are okay. the digital biz dude, and your branding, your branding isn't complete yet. Your brand, you just got a name. Your branding comes when you actually right. start doing what it is that you have called yourself to be. Until we can see that happening in reality, it's going to be hard for you to say, I, I, you know, you haven't really branded yourself. So whether that's putting some stuff out, I don't know whether you do it or not. I don't really see a lot coming from you, but obviously you're busy with working in school and things like that. But, you know, start to build up the pipeline of digital business stuff that you can offer. And when I say offer, I'm talking about content. Right. So that you become a professional in that area until you actually develop the business where you have products and services. That makes sense. This is how you brand yourself before you actually have a business. You brand you start branding yourself right now. I'm the digital biz dude. Whenever you got some digital business questions, you come to this dude right here. And here's the content I'm putting out each and every day, each and every week. So, you know where you can get your digital business content at. I became the certified financial account. I became the money guy way before I had a business. People knew they could come to ERGJ if they had a money question. And I want people to know they can come to Jonathan Cooper when they got a digital business question. How about that? What did I say to you earlier? Like the Bible says, that man that knows to do right and doesn't do it. I, I everything you see, everything that you're saying. I've said that to myself for the past couple of months. I'm like, okay, I need to have a website. I need to do a blog, something to put myself out there to be the expert. So, and I know that everything, everything that you're saying is coming out of love. So I receive it. I receive it. I receive criticism. So, and I know it's coming from the right place. And you're, I agree with you a thousand percent, Evan. A thousand. You're right. Absolutely right. Well, I want you to change your vocabulary from I need to I am. Mm. Ah, that's a little, that's a little, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. You did that, just hit me in the throat. That's heavy. That's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> once you change your vocabulary, and this becomes your your words, not just something I'm putting in you. Once you change from I need to I am, that's going to change. That's going to propel you into now I, now I'm serious about whatever it is that I want to do. It's no longer a, something that's a thought, something I know I, I got to get around to. It's I, I am. <laughs> So that's my word for you tonight, man. It's something for you to meditate on, something for you to, 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 to let come to light for you, come through the inside and out. I am. That's the type of people that I'm connected to. I'm connected to the I am people. And I know that you're one of them. That's why I'm talking to you the way I'm talking to you tonight. I know that you're one of them. I know you're a guy that's going to show up. I know you're a guy that's going to be successful. 
It's just a matter of now becoming the I am instead of the I need. Plenty of I need people. Need does not move the universe. If need moved the universe, then we would have no homelessness. We would have no hunger. We would have none of that. Need does not move the universe. It's people that are walking what they're talking and not just talking that move the universe, that move the needle. Abdul. Man, that's powerful. Um, Jonathan, um, and this is this all comes to love. Just want to let you know this before I say this. Do you honestly believe that you can be a successful digital marketer? Yes, I do. I really do. I see it. No, it's funny. I can see it in front of me, but it terrifies me. Why? That I don't know. I don't know why. For some reason. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. I'm the deal, guys. And and the reason why we're having this conversation, I know you guys like multiple streams of income, but this falls in line because in order for you to build wealth and get these multiple streams of income, this is a point that most people have to get over. It's not the fear of failure, it's the fear of success. Now, why do we fear success? Mm -hmm. And we can go back to the great uh, poem that we're great beyond measure. Now, here's what happens with success. You don't think about the success, you don't think about what comes with the success. Oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I got these responsibilities. Oh, I'm out in front of the crowd. Oh, I'm a leader now. Oh, I got people that are following me. Oh, I got to always do the right thing. Now you're stepping out from the crowd and you're stepping into that place. You're stepping away from the 95% and the 5% have different level of responsibility, right? And that is the fear is carrying. Can I really carry this responsibility? Why? Because I've been walking with the 95% for so long that I recognize what that I'm comfortable with that responsibility. For me to take on this next level of leadership, this next level of success, this next level of responsibility, that's something that I'm not comfortable doing. So until I get the gumption or until I actually, it ain't even getting the gumption. It's just a matter of saying that I'm going after this. And then that is, that is the, that's that, that's that um, breakthrough that people go through. It's that fear of the responsibility that comes with the success. Imagine, just imagine for a minute, everybody imagine right now that you are Warren Buffett. You're Warren Buffett. You got all this money. You got all these people that's trying to get you to sit down and have a conversation with them. You got all these people that's trying to get to your money. You got everybody, everywhere you go, people want to talk to you. They want to stop you. They want your autograph. They want your attention because you're Warren Buffett. Well, I want to tell you guys that you are Warren Buffett. You got a little Warren Buffett inside of you. And that comes with the territory. Success, that comes with the success territory. That comes with the progress territory. I got people that call me all the time. I can't get everybody my attention, but I recognize that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. So humbly step into your place of greatness. Own your greatness. You all got it inside of you. But I understand that fear. I I really do understand the fear. I've been there. I think we all have. At some point, we was like, I know I got greatness in me, but man, it's not the, it's not doing the thing that is keeping me. It's the stuff that comes along with doing the thing. If I could just be successful in the dark, that's me all day long. But as, it, unfortunately, you can't because there's a light that comes along with your success. There is a light that shines on you when you step into your greatness, when you step into your place of power. Go ahead, Abdul. No, I'm just saying that, that that's the biggest thing. You, you, you hit it on the head. Uh, mindset. If you don't believe, you know, Mark Twain said, I can help anyone achieve anything they want to do in life. Only thing they have to do is know what they want. And if you got to, that's where it starts. You got to believe, you got to see yourself becoming that digital marketer at that, you know, the top digital market. And then once you see it and you believe it and you're not going to, you're not going to stop until you reach it, then the action will follow. So that's why I think a lot it, 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 it kind of holds a lot of people back in life is the, that mindset, the negative mindset. Oh, Anthony said he got something to add too, man. He's back in this piece. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope yeah, that tonight, guys, guys, we just you know, you know, this is coming from a place of love. And this is for everybody that's out there, man. It's just you know, we're dealing with some real stuff here. This is real stuff that we all many of we have all dealt with. And so hopefully tonight is a, is a night that you're being you're breaking you're breaking the chains of your own slavery. Your yeah. mental slavery, your emotional slavery, whatever it is that's holding you back from being great. I hope tonight is that night. Tonight is that catalyst for you. No coercing. You don't have to drop any money into some uh, some some fund or anything like that. This is all about helping you to break free and so you can become who it is that you know that you can become. Go ahead, Anthony. Well, something Abdul just said about you have to be able to visualize yourself 
uh, being that number one person. And just to kind of give you personal experience of mine, because like I said, you know, I'm not the best insurance agent that's out there. But when I was planning for my own office, um, I got on the internet and I printed off a bunch of pictures of nice office furniture, what I wanted it to look like and how I wanted my office to be. And I created a vision board for it. Mm. And so I looked at several locations when I was trying to find, I knew the, the, the community that I wanted to be in, but I was trying to find the right building. And mm. so the building that I'm in right now, I passed by it so many times going to look at other buildings. Mm. And so this one building, you know, I was planning on getting it. It was much smaller than what I wanted. And he wanted twice the rent that I was willing to pay for. And so finally, you know, I said to myself, I have to be willing to walk away from this because that's not really what I want. On my way back from that office, the building that I'm in right now, they had a for rent sign there. And so I see the sign as I'm coming up on. I take a picture of the sign and I call them on my way home. And the lady said, well, yeah, you know, the building's open. You can come see it tomorrow morning. And I said, well, I'll be at church tomorrow morning, but I'll come right after. Can we meet at 2 o'clock? She said, yes. So I walk into this building. It looks like an old warehouse from the outside. When I walked in, the, as soon as I walked in the front door, there was wood floors on the front. And when I walked past, there was a big open space. And then there were two offices off to the side. And when I saw it, I said, this is exactly like the picture that I have on my vision board. That's how it works. I just have to put, I just have to put the furniture in there, but this is it's set up the exact same way. And so I asked them how much, and it was within my price range. And it was on the end facing the traffic that was coming towards the building. So when I put my sign out there, Everybody would see my sign, Anthony Sims Allstate. Everybody would see. It. And so it wasn't a situation. I mean, everything just kind of lined up. And like I was saying before, I pay attention to what the universe is saying. When I was negotiating with that other guy, he was just not giving me any act right. <laughs> I mean, he, he lost, it wasn't he meant lost to beat him. the deal all because he did not want to clean up the break room. It was not for you. And, and, and I mean, all the opposition was telling me, I don't need to give this man my money. I don't need to be here. And like I said, I had passed by my building so many times and never paid any attention until I finally decided that that was not for me. And then on the way back, I saw the sign and I got it. Now, watch this. I want to own my own building one day. And across the street from my office is like, three acres and it's been for sale for the last 10 years and nobody wants it. And every day I look at that, look at that land. I see the building that I'm going to put there. You got it on your vision board. It's, it's there. It's, it's a picture of just that land. Mm. And then there's a picture of a drawing that I drew in high school of a building that I wanted. I was, using, I was using that mechanical engineering, huh, in high school, I, a drafting class. I was in that drafting class, too. It was it was a class that I didn't even want to take. Me neither. I didn't want to take it either, but one of the best classes I ever took, I still got my drawings. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, but but like, like I was saying before, you have to pay, t like, this call tonight is to basically tell you, because think about it, we went from multiple streams of income to focusing on Jonathan Cooper. So we are telling you, this is the universe telling you to get up off of your ass and do something with this knowledge that you're you're being shared with. Right. And like Abdul said, this is out of love. Oh, yeah. You have no reason. You have 52 people watching right now. Everybody tell Jonathan that he should get up off his ass and follow his dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it, yeah. Get, Jonathan, get up off your ass. Get up, get out and get something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a last thing to say, man, but I want to give you guys an opportunity to get, share your last thoughts and maybe share the things that you're doing or your websites or whatever the case may be. Um, Jonathan, I don't know. How can people follow you? What do you got going on? What we need to know? 
just follow me on Twitter. Follow me here on Blab. I'm not on Blab as much, but if you follow me on Twitter, same digital biz dude, that's the best way to keep up with me. Um, I should be having some things coming out very soon, so I got to get up off my ass and get moving. <laughs> and no more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. Abdul, man, any last words for the peeps? Yeah, just, man, just uh, Jonathan, anybody out there, man, you just got, there's a few things I've learned, and one thing I've learned is that when you help people, you help yourself. Take money out of the equation and just really sincerely help people and do what you love. You know, if, if the job isn't what you like, you know, build a bridge to your dream. Don't don't quit tomorrow. You know, save money. You got to you got to do things to get there. Take steps. But when you do what you love, you spend more time in it and you become a master of what you what you love doing. So that's that's my that's what I have to say. Absolutely, guys. Now, he said something about this, this acre of land. And I'll say this and then we'll wrap up, man, that, that your dream or whatever it is that you see here on the earth is built three times. First, it's built in your mind. It's that That's the visionary. And you, the visionary in you is a, probably already built your dream. Second, after the visionary, you have the architect. This is the person that's going to design what it is that you have actually built in, the, in your mind. So you have the visionary, then you have the architect, and then you have the builder the builder of the physical thing, the builder of the State Farm Insurance Agency, the builder of this product or service that you have. So you got to ask yourself, am I one, two, or all three of those people? You may not be. You may be the visionary of this new company, and you're going to get someone else to design it. You may be the visionary and the designer, and you're going to pay someone else to build it. Or you might be all three. Where are you in this process as it relates to building your very own dream, Whatever that is for you, builder, I'm sorry, visionary, architect, and builder. That's my last words for you today because we're talking about you actually building out these multiple streams of income that's going to help funnel or, or fuel or fund your mission. I'm not telling you to get multiple streams of income just to be rich. I don't want you just to be rich. The whole point is not for you to focus on the money. It's to focus on the mission. I believe that if your mission is big enough that it requires a fortune, that you're going to get that fortune in order for you to build your mission, in order for you to accomplish whatever that mission is. So focus not on the money. The money is going to be the resource, the tool that you need. Focus on the mission. When you focus on the mission, everything in this world will work in your favor for you to actually accomplish your mission. And money is a part of it. It's true, man. Not about the money. It's about the mission. Builder, I'm sorry, visionary, architect, builder, where are you? as it relates to building your dreams, as it relates to building multiple streams of income to help you accomplish your mission. Hey, I'm ERGJ, Certified Financial Educator. Of course, you can find me at www.ergj.net. Find me on Facebook, find me on Blab. We do this every once in a while. I've got a show every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Wealthy, ha Healthy, Happy Show. If you need to start your day off with some motivation and some inspiration, I say it like this. Nothing great has ever been accomplished without a little inspiration. Tune into that. We also upload, upload that to our YouTube channel. And then also we have a show at eight o'clock, The Money Mind Show. Going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Saibo. Steve, I'm coming for my check. Tune into that at 8 a.m. It's a 15 minute show to change the way that you think so you can change the results in your life. That's what we're doing each and every day. So you can catch me there. Hey, I'll be here tomorrow at 7 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And the question is, will you? Hey, you guys have a good night, man. You too.